God bless you today. This is Bishop Maynard, the pastor of Cathedral of Praise, and I'm excited once again to be with you on this night. We are thankful that God has given to us an opportunity to serve him irrespective of what's going on in our world, in our society, and specifically within our immediate environment. I have with me again Dr. Shadana Fagan, who will be speaking uh, to you, and the two of us will be sharing information uh, because we're concerned about what people think. For some reason, people think that medicine is way off to the left and uh, faith-based ministries are off to the right, and that which we do by faith can never merge with that which we do by medicine. I am under the opinion that God has called all of us. I have been called into the word ministry. I have been called into the ministry to address myself to the need of people spiritually. And she has been called to the ministry to address herself to people physically and mentally. And so if we merge the two uh, where they in fact can be merged, uh, all of our society will be blessed. And so you were with us last Friday, and we appreciate you joining us last Friday, and we're glad that you're joining us today uh, so that we can continue that dialogue with you. I am wearing a mask, and I might sound a little different from the way that I sound last uh, week, but I did it on purpose. I'm not wearing a mask because I feel uncomfortable being with uh, Dr. Fagan I am wearing a mask to let you know that it's not a problem for you when you go out, when you go to church, uh, to wear a mask. We talked about what are we going to do when we start coming to church again. It is our intention at Cathedral of Praise to start service again on the first Sunday in June. And we are going to talk to you about the things that we're going to do as it pertains to our coming back in. So right now, I'm going to take my mask down. And now that I've taken my mask down, I know I sound differently. And um, I, I'm also feeling uh, as well as I did when I had the mask on. However, I want you to know that we are preparing uh, because we've already sanitized our church every single day. We go back over uh, san uh, sanitizing the church again. Uh, the truth of the matter is nobody's in here uh, in the sanctuary, uh, but we have uh, our environmental service team to uh, sanitize. All of our restrooms are sanitized. All of our office spaces are sanitized. Our doors, uh, the uh, handles on our doors, entry, uh, whether they be rooms, classrooms, doors to uh, uh, restroom facilities or what have we, Everything in the church is sanitized, including this microphone that I'm using and the one that Dr. Fagan will be using. We sanitize the mics. Uh, we're concerned that uh, nobody uses the uh, same mic without it having been sanitized. Uh, we have a different mic for me, a different mic for all the praise team singers. And although they may use the same mic each week, uh, it's sanitized every time they use it. And uh, before they can use it again, uh, is sanitized. Our carpet, all of these things are sanitized and they have to be. And then we test people as they come in uh, with their temperature to find out whether or not uh, they have high or low temperature. It's extremely important that we do that. And then we ask people, do you have a mask and did you wear a mask? And we give people an opportunity when they come to church to wear a mask during the whole service if they so desire. On the other hand, if they don't, uh, they don't have to. However, we're going to make sure that we practice physical distancing, physical distancing from an ecclesiastical posture. And so because we're not a social agency and we're not having a social here at the church, we are having an ecclesiastical worship and praise service. And we do know that we emit from our bodies, we emit from our mouths certain kinds of things when we talk. 
uh, when we sing, uh, when I preach, or whatever it is, uh, these things are. But if we keep our distance uh, in our services, and that's what we're going to do, uh, we will be doing that again uh, when we get started. And we're not going to just stop. I uh, hear the words of uh, a new norm. Whether it's a new norm or not, we're not going to stop doing what we're doing. Again, we'll always have had a clean church, but we're going to make sure that all the time it's sanitized after we do anything in any part of our building uh, that is coming into the door and going out of the door because we want everybody to feel safe in the Lord. And we still believe in the 91st Psalm that has carried us through. Faith is operative. Faith is most operative through love. If you love people, you're going to make sure you take care of people so that you don't endanger them and jeopardize their life. Dr. Fagan, you know, it's good to see you again uh, on uh, today. I'm glad that you can be uh, with us uh, one more time. Uh, when we were here before, you had a great word for people. And I believe that some people have asked you some questions. So again, Dr. Fagan, would you please uh, indicate unto the people who you are again? And then uh, you can move into those questions, and then we'll go on from there. Thank you, Bishop, for having me. Um, I'm Dr. Shandana Fagans, and I am a graduate of Meharry Medical College. I've been in private practice for almost 20 years. My specialty is internal medicine, and I treat acute and chronic illnesses, uh, such as uh, acute illnesses such as your common cold, acute bronchitis, and things of that such. And I also treat chronic illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, and pulmonary diseases. So. Glad to be here today and to talk to you some more. Um, I will start with some of the questions. There are a couple of questions from the last time we met yeah. that I want to address. <clears throat> One was, I heard that once you get coronavirus or COVID-19, you can't get it again, but you can't, but can you get it or give it to someone else or cause someone else to be sick? Um, most people with coronavirus who have symptoms, um, once they contract the virus, after 10 days of, uh, well, 10 days from the time they are uh, diagnosed with coronavirus or COVID-19, um, they need to quarantine or isolate for those 10 days afterwards. Um, because after the 10 days, normally, if they're symptom-free for 10 days after diagnosis, they're no longer contagious. Um, so of course, some people will not have symptoms that will test positive, and so they still need to quarantine or isolate for the 10 days. But because the virus uh, manifests itself differently with different people, the uh, specialist and experts recommend a total of 14 days to quarantine or isolate once you're diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, but the main thing is because this virus does manifest itself differently in different people, um, the main thing is you want to continue to wear masks, continue to uh, physically or socially distance, uh, that six feet distance, and wash your hands. Another question was, do you recommend that everyone get tested even if they don't have symptoms? So <clears throat> I don't recommend that everyone gets tested unless you know for sure that you were in contact with someone who came po back positive. Um, and that would involve at least being in the presence of someone more than 10 minutes and close proximity to that person and then you find out, say, for example, it was a coworker or a family member, um, that the person came back positive, then I would recommend that you get tested. If you've been in your home and you're basically going to the grocery store uh, once a week, you're in and out of the store, you're really not interacting with anyone, and you've been doing that, I wouldn't recommend that you get tested if you're not having any symptoms or anything of the sort. Now, one of the things, we know that the economy is opened back up 
And people are going back to work. Um, they're going to churches that are going to be opening up. Schools are still closed, but schools are talking about opening up in the fall. So the question then becomes, how do you safely transition from being quarantined, isolated for the last eight weeks and going back safely into the work environment or the church environment or the school environment? Again, it comes back to the essentials of washing your hands, maintaining that physical distance and wearing a mask because when you talk to someone, you're expelling respiratory droplets. Because not everyone <coughs> is, has the opportunity to be tested in terms of the antibody test, and we talked about this last time, the antibody test tells you whether or not you've been exposed to the virus. The antibody test will not be accurate for at least three to four weeks after you were either diagnosed with the COVID-19 through the nasal or the oral swab, or if you displayed symptoms, you may have tested negative, but you had all the symptoms of COVID-19. So <clears throat> in order to, for, to get an accurate antibody test, you have to wait three to four weeks after those symptoms uh, resolved, after you were tested and came back positive. So since not everyone is gonna have access to the antibody test to determine whether or not they have antibodies and they're immune to the coronavirus, then it's best to practice those safe precautions of wearing a mask, washing your hands, and practicing physical distancing because you're not gonna know whether or not the person that you're sitting next to at work or working with um, at school or wherever, you're not gonna know if that person is immune unless you have those results. And due to the HIPAA laws of medicine, you're not privy to that information anyways. So I'm not sure what the government plans on doing in terms of, you know, when, when they start testing patients and people in the community with the antibody test, how are they gonna get that information out to the community? Is that information gonna be privy to the community? Or is that gonna be something that maybe the employee in a work environment situation has to show their boss before they come back to work. So um, those are questions that eventually, hopefully they will have answers to, but at this present time, really no one knows. Amen. And uh, again, this is uh, Dr. Fagan joining me. Uh, we are discussing now transitioning uh, from uh, being quarantined to going back into the community to do things that you have not been doing for quite some time. And the question is, how do you uh, protect yourself? She has given you uh, the answers uh, from uh, her uh, perspective relative to uh, being a doctor and, and letting you know. So you need to pay attention to that. Uh, she has utilized uh, the terminology that you need to wash your hands. All right, you need to wear a mask. You need to do your distancing uh, from others. Wherever you are, you need to do those things. I want to add to that, uh, when we are uh, involved in, as faith people, uh, this does not mean uh, that we have absented ourselves from the earth, and therefore we are objects that cannot be uh, contaminated by anyone if we act uh, somewhat foolishly. I want you to know Satan said uh, to Jesus, if you are really who you say you are, I want you to jump off of this high rise place. And before you land, the angels will come and they will hold you up, lest your feet uh, would dash, it says, against the stone. Well, see, God is not asking us uh, to tempt him. Jesus told the devil, uh, that the word lets us know that you should not tempt the Lord your God. So I'm not going to do that. So then as we move back into the community, we need to do the things that we're supposed to do. And as a pastor who is inviting people to come back to church, uh, I am saying to you that all of the things that you need to do, which are precautionary, 
you yet need to do those things. God is with you, however, uh, if you come. And if you would take heed to yourselves and do the things that you know you should do, then do it. When we come into the house of God, we will have physical distancing. Uh, we will not all be sitting on the same pew. Uh, we will not all be uh, talking to each other and screaming at each other in each other's faces. When we come in like we used to, I am a hugging uh, pastor. I've been hugging people just about all of my life in the clergy. Uh, I do not hug now. Uh, it's not that I don't love people because I still love them, but I'm just not going to be hugging. And I don't want you hugging me. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, in addition, and listen to me, in addition to that, uh, you cannot be standing around as a group of people doing what you used to do. Uh, that does not mean that God is not God and that you're not a child of God, but it does mean that you are being responsible. And as a pastor, I am teaching you to be responsible, and, 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 and that's the way it ought to be. Now, having said that, that's church. But now you spend a lot of time other places. Uh, Dr. Fagan indicated going to the stores. There are going to be family reunions uh, that you will be attending. Uh, there will be other things that you're, you're doing. You go places where you used to go. I watch people now when they go to, the, to get gas. I watch them. And I, one day I just uh, waited a long time before I went to the gas pump to pump gas. And I noticed that people, one, they didn't wear a mask. Two, they didn't have gloves on, and they were handling uh, those um, pumps. Uh, and uh, they were putting their hands on them, and one after another, after another, after another. Well, here again, I, I think to some extent, you might be uh, being a little ir irresponsible. And the reason I say that, because no attendant came out to wipe those pumps and those handles. No attendant came out to do that. And so we don't know where these people were before they came, so you have to be responsible. A doc, many people say, well, I don't want to have, um, I, I, I don't want my temperature taken. Uh, sometimes you need to do things as a preventive measure, and some people say, I don't want a shot, shot, needles hurt. Where in order for you to get what you need to have to come into your body, you're going to have to have a needle to put it in there. And so um, uh, some things you may not want to do, uh, Dr. Fagan, but some things people have to do. What do you say? I say that, uh, you know, this is not about you. It's about the community. We're all in this together. And so you, you know, if it requires that if you're entering into a grocery store or a church, you know, some stores require that you wear a mask. Regardless, you have to wear a mask to enter the store or they won't allow you to enter the store. And some people think that that's taking away their, their freedom. But again, we're in this together. No one's trying to take away your freedom. We're just trying to make sure that everybody is safe um, because this is a novel new virus that we are still learning about and every day the information changes um, in terms of taking temperature you know some people are asymptomatic some people never get a fever and they're still positive but the majority of the symptoms that, that people get who are coronavirus positive are fever cough shortness of breath so although there are a few that don't have fever the majority of the patients and people in the community that get coronavirus have fever. So it is very necessary that when you enter the church that your temperature is taken. And if you have a temperature, then you know it's up to the church to decide how to um, deal with that. But in my office, when I do go back into the office and start t uh, seeing patients, they will re be required to have their temperature taken. There will be questions that they will have to answer be pre-screening questions before we set them up with an appointment. They will have to enter my office with a mask or they will not be allowed to enter. And if their temperature is, is 100 degrees or higher, we will have to reschedule them. 
And so that that is that's for everyone. That doesn't make any difference who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think your husband comes there. He has half his temperature that's taken true. as well. That's true. And the employees will be having their temperatures <laughs> taken throughout the day as well. And yeah. If they temperature is, becomes elevated, they will be sent home. All of our employees here at the church uh, have their temperature taken. I've had mine taken uh, over and over again, and we will continue to do that. Now, one of the things that I want to say from a uh, faith-based posture, uh, from a person who uh, addresses himself uh, in the uh, spiritual realm to, to all of us, one of the things that we don't want to do, and that's not the purpose of our being on here today, we're not trying to talk to you about fear. We're not trying to cause you to be afraid to live. Uh, that's one of the things that you can ill afford to do, and that is to be afraid. Don't be afraid to come out of your house. Don't be afraid to go to the store. Don't be afraid to go to the service station to, to get gas. Uh, don't be afraid to, to uh, do that. What you need to do is practice those things which are safe. See, staying home on one hand is safe. That's safe, they say. However, uh, we understand where uh, uh, Governor Cuomo in um, uh, New York said that 60% of the people who contracted the uh, coronavirus were people who were staying home. Now, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take that. I, didn't, I wasn't the one who did that to find out if that's true. But that's what he said. So the point is that you're, you are safe uh, in God. That doesn't mean that people who have God don't get the coronavirus. That's not what I'm saying. But, but you cannot perfect love cast out fear. You have to be willing. If there's anybody who believes in, in the power of God, it ought to be the people who say so and go to church all the time. Church folk ought to be people who operate not out of, uh, not with fear, but they are people who believe in God and, and, and that they're not reckless, their behavior is not ridiculous, uh, but they do understand what they need to do in order for them to have good, uh, helpful life. And that is true whether you have uh, this uh, pandemic or not. If, if there was no world pandemic with regard to this virus, we still need to be safe and practice uh, things uh, that, that uh, offer to us safety. So uh, Dr. Fagan, often uh, I've been asked the question, if I walk into a place and uh, accidentally touch something that might be contaminated, don't know that it is, but ac- accidentally touch it, they don't have on gloves, uh, may have on a mask, but I don't have on gloves. What are the possibilities at that point of me contracting the virus? So the possibilities are low. Um, you know, they've done these um, presentations where they'll put like a glow in the dark type of solution on someone's hand, and then they'll show them in the restaurant or wherever, and they show how that solution is transferred from item or, or, you know, from place to place, depending on what's going on. Um, they did one on CNN last night and they put the solution on a woman's hand and then they had lunch. Mm-hmm. And she poured water for everybody sitting at the table. She touched someone on the shoulder when she entered the room to say hello. Um, they were sharing, passing the food around. And so then they turned the lights off and you could see everything glow in the dark. And some of the, well, everyone sitting at the table had the solution on their hands because they were interacting with her. Um, So it it depends on the viral load. Um, The the likelihood of you touching a surface um, and getting the virus, it's low. Not saying that it can't happen because it has happened. The The thing is, we know that the virus is transmitted from person to person through respiratory droplets, and it enters through the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. So if you keep your hands away from your mouth, your nose, and your eyes, and you know, which sometimes you just gotta really be conscious about what you're doing. And I think going back to what you were saying, Bishop, about Cuomo saying most of the people that got it were ones staying at home, 
you know, when you're at home and you're in fear, you know, when you're at home, you don't have to really worry about touching your face Mm -hmm. because you're at home. You're not touching surfaces that other people have touched. This is your home. You disinfected it. You, you know, sanitized and everything like that. But when you're not used to doing that and then when you get out and you finally go out, you're so used to being at home and just being comfortable that you forget. Oh, I can't touch my face. I can't, you know, if I go pump some gas and I don't use gloves, I got to remember to sanitize. Don't touch your face as soon as you, you know, put the gas pump back in place. So you don't want to operate out of fear, but at the same time, you want to be conscious of how you contract the virus and make sure that you, you know, continue to wash your hands and keep your hands out of your face. So then what we're saying is don't operate out of fear, but operate responsively. Make sure that you're doing what you need to do and it would work. Uh, I'd like to just say this to you. Um, um, The point is that God is our refuge and he's our strength. He's a present help in time of trouble. Uh, If you are into something uh, accidentally, Uh, the Lord would help you. If your lifestyle is of that, where you are continuing to go against the principles of the Lord, then you're going to suffer the consequences of your independence. Don't expect God to do for you when you're saying to him, God, I ignore you for every other thing and every other part of my life. And so I know that you are God. He is God. And he's a helper of all of us. But whatever we do, we need to be responsible in our doing and not try to create problems for other people and particularly problems for yourself. Uh, God gave to us in September of 2019 uh, the 91st Psalms. We have been doing it every Sunday, twice with our services. And we believe that God is our protector. We believe that he's the one who helps us. And uh, with that, all of us around here, when we go out, we have masks on. I put gloves on equally as well. Somebody says you don't have to have gloves on. Well, that's fine too. But I put gloves on. I put a mask on. And in, in addition to that, I distance myself from people and I don't allow myself to get uh, into long, long conversations and close uh, 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 with people. Uh, I kind of keep uh, my uh, distance in that sense uh, because I'm saying to God, I know that you are here for me, uh, but there are some things that I need to do. If I can't swim, I'm not going to jump into an ocean of water and say, now, Lord, help me, free me. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay away from uh, deep water Uh, and uh, uh, say to God, thank you, God. All these years I have not had to swim, (laughs) and so I appreciate you. God is the kind of God who will help us, period. But at the same time, he does not want us to act foolishly. Uh, Dr. Fagan, uh, you are doing um, uh, what they call telemedicine. I believe that's what it's called, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. And the people you are helping, they're benefiting, although they don't come. It's kind of like us with this virtual Uh, church services that we're having. We've been having those all the time. And the people have been so responsive uh, in their attending. Uh, We even have a, um, uh, we even have a couples class that you're involved in that we do every Thursday night. Uh, And uh, that's great. It's at 630 every Thursday night. And uh, we invite people to become a part of that. But I said that about your telemedicine because I want you to share with the people uh, just how it is and, and how uh, it's benefiting those who, who uh, uh, come to your practice via the telephone. Yeah, so telemedicine has been around for a, a few years now. Uh, most of the, they use it in rural areas where people don't have access to uh, medical care or physicians in the community because they may have one physician in a small community. So they use it a lot in rural areas, but since the pandemic, they have been using it in large cities uh, across the nation. And it basically involves uh, FaceTime, whether you do it through your cell phone or through some sort of social media uh, form like Facebook. 
and it allows the physician and the patient to talk to one another face to face without the um, risk of coming in contact with the virus. So you're practicing physical distancing, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot that can be done using telemedicine. Um, I can look in a person's mouth actually during telemedicine and I can, the only thing I can't do is listen to their lungs or to their heart. Um, but you know, a lot of situations, in my case, I know my patients, they've been coming to me for five plus years, some 10 years and longer. So I know my patients. Um, if it's a situation where um, you think that, oh, I'm having chest pain or things like that, we can send you to the appropriate uh, places such as the emergency room to be checked out. But overall, it's been very useful to the patients. They're able to do it in the comfort of their home. Um, and I've seen more patients actually doing telehealth uh, than I have when we were doing the physical office visits because really there's no excuse why you can't make it to the doctor. <laughs> well, that's, that's And it gives great. us more flexibility with the hours that we can see the patient as well. Very good, very good. Let me tell you, uh, at 6 o'clock on Sunday, uh, we just thank God that we're able to come to you at 6 o'clock on Sunday, and we invite you to join us uh, on Sunday, at uh, every Sunday at 6 o'clock. Uh, we will be here, Bishop Maynard, in discussion uh, with people. We have different people who will be coming on, and we're just expecting God to bless us as we uh, move into the area. Uh, that you have and the questions that you need to ask of us, we're willing to answer those questions and we invite you and others to do the same. Also, uh, we want you to share with uh, your friends uh, what we have discussed here tonight. I am so glad to have um, Dr. Fagan with me once again uh, to share where she is in uh, medicine and to share where she is in, in Christ. She is a person who is a believer in God. Uh, she's gone to school and she's done all the things that she needed to do to make herself uh, not only available, but a person who understands the body, who understands man, and is able to offer things uh, to you. Uh, so once again, we invite you to join us, and we're thankful that you have tonight. Don't forget to tell other people about us. One last time, Dr. Fagan, where is your practice? So my practice is located in Madison, Tennessee at 607 West, Due West Avenue, Suite 113. Um, if you want to make an appointment for FaceTime uh, through telemedicine, you can contact us at 615-860-8182. That's 615-860-8182. And we can schedule you an appointment to be evaluated. God bless you. And I am Bishop Jerry Maynard, 4300 Clarksville Pike, Nashville, Tennessee, inviting you to join us again, as you have often done. And we'll see you again next Sunday at 6 p.m. Until such time, know this, that we are where you are.